So this morning, you know, I don't know what to make of all of this because it's happening so quickly. I can't believe the state to which the country has degenerated. I've been in contact with a reliable source within the Canadian military, and he told me today by email that if I had any sense, I'd take my money out of the Canadian banks because the situation is far worse than I've been informed. And so that's just one of many such messages I receive on a daily basis. So let's talk about the bank. So here's what our prime minister did last week. He permanently destroyed 20% of the population's faith in the entire Canadian banking system and stained the Canadian banking system's international reputation, I would say, for decades. And in any normal time, that in itself would have been enough to constitute sufficient grounds for a non-confidence vote for the government to be ousted. And that's only one of like the seven things that happened last week that are of that magnitude. You can't even keep up with them. And so let's talk about this emergency for a minute. So, you know, I talked to Brian Peckford, the former premier of Newfoundland a couple of weeks ago about the fact that the mandates themselves weren't justifiable under the essentially the emergency clause in the charter. Which, which allows for the suspension of certain basic rights under certain conditions. The mandates themselves weren't justifiable, especially now. And now the ante has been raised to a tremendous degree because we have a new emergency, which is apparently more serious than the entire COVID pandemic that justifies the imposition of martial law and the seizing of bank accounts and the retroactive definition of crime and all of this. And so what? Let, let, I'll ask you to play devil's advocate, okay, just for a minute. So imagine that you're on the side of Trudeau and, and, the, and the Trudeau government, and you're trying to make the case that this is an emergency that justifies the imposition of martial law. So what's the emergency exactly? Tell me, give me some evidence that there's an emergency of any sort. Even if, and I, I accept the challenge to be a devil's advocate, let me just, let me really try what is the thing that is making the Canadian state tremble to the point of its own dissolution? Uh, are all the provincial capitals under seizure? No, I don't think so. Oh, I, I got it. Uh, the Russians are coming down from the north and they've got a fleet of the highest gunnery. And you know, it's not that either. Oh, oh may, maybe it's inflation. And if we kill the truckers, you know, we ruin the truckers, we can take. Look, even trying to be advocate. Okay, great imposition. I'll, I'll go that far. Great imposition on the kind of comfort and tranquility of Ottawa. But there's been an awful lot of imposition on the tranquilities of every person in this country for the last two years. You couldn't visit your sick mother if she was in an old age home. You cannot. Look, Mr. Freeland is supposed to be bright. And Mr. Lametti, after some of the things he's been saying, I have to hold judgment on. Where's the threat? There isn't one. This was this, the longest, most sustained, and almost, you can read it and you can see the, the live pictures from people who are not in the news media. It was even an almost celebratory thing. If, if even a delegation of the Trudeau cabinet had walked down the streets of Ottawa, had enough of Parkers that they could sit outdoors and spend two hours talking to some of these real people, this could have been washed away. So even Advocatus Diabolus, I cannot do it because I cannot even in fantasy come up with okay, reasons. Well, let, let, me can't do it. let me try. Let me try. So, you so go let's ahead. say, all right, so this is a, uh, it's a radical right-wing movement and it's funded by mega uh, money flowing in from the United States and that there's a real threat of a January 6th style insurrection and as a consequence to protect Ottawa and the stability of the state, we have to make the trucker convoy illegal. And so, and then we have to hunt everyone down and track everyone down who ever donated because they're part of this extreme far right network that has its origins in the United States and the entire integrity no, of the state no. is no. Well, so does anyone believe that? It's like so because I don't get it. I don't even I don't even see why this this is a wise move strategically for the liberal. Well, I tell you, there is there is a reason why they believe it because they, this is why I brought up the United States. It wasn't idle. They had a sustained four years of believing what was not true. I'm stating this with definitive force. It simply wasn't true. Putin did not own Trump. Now, people might not like to hear that, but it was a confection. It was a setup. 
And yet all of the great investigative powers of some of the greatest journals and television stations in all the world went with it day and night. And now you'll have, for example, Mr. Biden's son with his contracts and these Chinese, not even to be mentioned. Here's how it comes to be. This, this far right, the, the white supremacy movement. I see the phrase white supremacy so often, and I wonder, where is this coming from? There, there will always be a, you know, some fanatically stupid set of people with some fanatically stupid cause, but there has not been, let me use this word, a pandemic of racist white challenge, but it's been the fodder and the, and the news speak and the woke dialect, and it's been shoved out so often that if you say the word MAGA now, this is where Lametti comes in. He said, you know, if you're pro-Trumpian, I can go down to Newfoundland and go from Port Bass to St. John's and then up, up to St. Anthony, and I will not meet anyone who is pro-Trumpian. I mean, it's silly. But if you, if, oh, as Catherine McKenna think- said, if you pound it hard enough and long enough, enough people will believe it. The Bible is the root of all wisdom, inspiration, and spiritual nourishment. The Hallow app empowers you to explore the Bible's profound teachings and to effortlessly incorporate them into your daily life. A great place to start while you deepen your understanding of the Bible is to check out Father Mike Schmitz's Bible in a Year, available on the Hallow app for brief daily readings and reflections. Here you can dive into an extensive library of Bible reading plans, accompanied by insightful reflections and audio-guided meditations. Whether you're a seasoned Bible reader or just starting your journey, Hallow provides a platform for you to engage with Scripture like never before. Studying the Bible's literary brilliance has influenced countless writers, poets, and artists throughout history. By studying the Bible yourself, you'll gain a deeper appreciation for the power of storytelling, symbolism, and metaphor, enriching your understanding of literature across different genres. The Hallow app also helps you connect with a community of like-minded individuals, sharing experiences, insights, and encouragement along the path to spiritual growth. Download the app for free at hallow.com slash Jordan. You can set reminders and track your progress along the way. Enrich your education and nurture your mind and soul today. Download the Hallow app at hallow.com slash Jordan. That's hallow.com slash Jordan. Hallow.com slash Jordan for an exclusive three-month free trial of all 10,000 plus prayers and meditations. Well, I can't I can't think of any other reason than belief in something like that that could possibly, justi- possibly justify what's happening because I can't believe that. So I'm trying to look for alternative explanations, you know. So, okay, the, the Liberal government has decided to implement a state of emergency. Okay, so here's a psychological explanation. Trudeau's father did that back in the 1970s and Justin is constantly trying to prove his validity as a, a figure of masculine integrity. And I think there's probably some of that going on because if there wasn't, he wouldn't have run for prime minister to begin with because he's so supremely unqualified to be prime minister that it's a complete bloody miracle that anyone could be narcissistic enough to assume that with that little knowledge, a role like that should be adopted. So that that's definitely a factor. And so he's got to stand up and show that he can do it under duress. And then it's got to be the belief that there's something like a far right conspiracy occurring because invoking the the Martial Law Act, the Emergency Act, is so preposterous a move that unless you actually believe that there was a signal threat of that paranoid sort, there's no way you could justify it strategically because I cannot see how anyone could think through, including Christia Freeland, by the way, the notion that this is going to go over well over a period of something approximating a month. So it's got to be, it's got to be that, and I read the other day that, that because Fintrack never found any evidence of, you know, radical foreigners colluding in a right wing manner to fund the Freedom Convoy, that most of the information that the government depended on was actually generated by the CBC. And so then we have this feedback loop, right? Well, there's that. Yeah. And that that's a whole other bloody insane catastrophe that that funding site was hacked by a crazy activist and then that information was distributed and that distribu- distribu- distribution of stolen information is technically illegal and the media jumped on that and the government capitalized on it and it's got to be that they believe their own press and that's so interesting because they bought the press and paid them to tell them what they wanted to hear and now they believe it and justify their, their policy as a consequence of that. 
Well, I'll pick up on two things you said. If there is some sort of dynamic of equating with the achievements of the father, the only thing I'll say about that, uh, you're the psychologist, is that in 1967, there was a very sweet man. I only read of him, but I heard enough people who was a cabinet minister, Pierre Laporte. There was an English ambassador. Boris Laporte ends up in the trunk of a car having been shot. Uh, there were all sorts of various actions by the FLQ that certainly generated a justified anxiety. And then I won't go into detail because younger people wouldn't remember any of this stuff, but there was some talk among the great uh, French Canadian leadership, Mr. Claude Ryan at the Navarre, that we may, be, we may have to step in. But what I'm trying to say, and not very well, is that at least there was a portion of actual deed in action, a horrific murder, uh, touches of something very close to or or equal to real terror, when when Pierre Trudeau hauled it down. The second thing in is, the this context is in the context in, of a in the context of an actual separatist movement that genuinely posed a threat to the integrity of the and, and in the context also of like movements like the, the the weather underground in the states that were blowing up post offices and shooting people it was also a time when this paranoia anxiety was 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 alert and that the hardest leftist people were starting to think of themselves as guerrillas uh, in the new world order the other thing was and this is this is very important the news clip is available i don't know i can't remember the name of the journalist but on the day that pierre trudeau bought in the war measures act which was the big 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 thing he was stopped by some reporter. I presume he was going in, but it doesn't matter. He was stopped by a reporter. And instead of, you know, brushing him off or leaving question period, the two of them, and Trudeau's just standing there, the two of them have this back and forth. And the reporter is really pushing. And Trudeau, give him all the credit in the world. He's pushing just as hard and almost nasty. We need liberals is one of the phrases that he used. What I'm saying there is that even if he overreached in the time, he was willing to stand face to face with a real reporter for almost half an hour, going back and forth as the camera rolled. In other words, he didn't hide. Now I'll go to your other point. He has to believe it. Look, maybe there is, maybe there is a substantial fantasy that is operative in the entire liberal cabinet. And if Mr. Trudeau actually believes that there is a genuine threat of MAGA overthrow and Trumpian forces, uh, there are, was it, 30 plus people in his cabinet? They can't all share that fantasy. And if we have 30 people elevated, well, then the how, else offices, do you, how else do you account for what they're doing? Like, because, because strategically, they have no, it's but, a bloody disaster. Because they genuflect. I, I put a, a note in the column that you kindly posted. I said heroes, and I was exaggerating. Where are the five or six people in his own cabinet or in his own caucus that are saying, Justin, you have really, really overreached vastly. You have insulted the nature of this country, which is always the middle course, always the willingness to at least try a compromise and a talk. And you've introduced false drama. And that's my, my explanation. Mm -hmm. Maybe the melodramatic idea of a great national emergency that will flare yeah. across the world. Maybe he saw himself as a hero. But if you're following the, the international press, we're getting a real beating and happy days or sunny days are not here again.